This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 12, Section 1, Stoichiometry. Now we're going to put all our little pieces together that we've been learning all year, and now we're going to make a big puzzle. So we're going to use those dimensional analysis skills that we learned in the very beginning. We're going to use that mole island, and now we're going to also need to know how to balance an equation because we're going to use those balanced equations in our stoichiometry problems. So vocab words as usual, repeat after me. And notice number four and six, I actually give you my definition instead of the book's definition. I tweaked it a little bit and I like mine a little bit better. All right, so number one, actual yield, excess reagent, limiting reagent, mole ratio, percent yield, stoichiometry, and theoretical yield. And I also kind of uh, gave you the uh, syllabus, right? The way to say stoichiometry, because that's a pretty big word with lots of syllables. So as usual, you're going to watch the rest of this video to write in those notes. You're going to define those terms by looking in the chapter or in the back of the book, the glossary, uh, because of that matching uh, vocab quiz in the future. Uh, so here we go. I went a little ahead of myself there. So pause the video and make sure to write in the mole ratio definition. So it might not make too much sense now, but hopefully you'll understand in the next video notes about how we're going to use this mole ratio to go from one substance to another. And that's where that dimensional analysis uh, skills are going to come real handy here. So not only are we going to convert, let's say, grams to moles of a substance using mole island, but now we have to go from moles of hydrogen gas to moles of water formed, okay? So that's what I mean by uh, you're going to use those coefficients, you're going to have a conversion, and it's going to go from a substance of what you have to a substance of what you want. So here is stoichiometry. So hopefully you paused and wrote that definition down. And if you notice, the definition of the book doesn't really give you much. So again, stoichiometry is another way of converting these quantities that we're going to talk about in this section about these reactants and products from that balanced chemical equation. So at the end of this chapter, you should be able to know how to do these stoichiometry problems, which is just a big dimensional analysis problem. So section one is the arithmetic of equations. In this section, you're going to explain how balanced equations apply to both chemistry and life. We're going to interpret these balanced equations uh, according to quantities of moles, particles, mass, and volume, and you're going to identify these quantities as being conserved. Silk is one of the most beautiful and luxurious of all fabrics. It is spun from cocoons of silk worms. Silk manufacturers know from experience that to produce enough silk to make just one elegant Japanese kimono, they will need over 3,000 cocoons. In a similar fashion, chemists need to know how much reactant is needed to make a certain amount of product. The answer lies in chemical equations. So from a balanced chemical reaction, you can determine the quantities of reactants and products in that reaction. So first, a little bit of information. Let's say we're going to throw a big party and we want to make lots of cookies. Well, the recipe I have only calls to, calls to make 24 cookies. So how can I do this easily? How can I make lots of cookies quickly and efficiently? And some of you are saying, well, I've done this before. I've doubled or tripled the recipe. Well, companies want to do the same thing with chemical reactions. So let's take something like ammonia. Well, let's look at the real name for ammonia. Ammonia, since nitrogen is a non-metal, this is a covalent compound, the real name would be nitrogen trihydride. But the common name is ammonia. And if you're in the company to for cleaning products, ammonia is going to be a big component of that. Well, you're going to want to make this in bulk. So what are we going to do? Well, just like the cookie recipe that we doubled, we're going to double the moles of a reaction. But let me remind you, we do not have a measuring tool to measure moles. So we have to now go back to that mole island and we have to either deal with grams or liters. And of course, we're also going to be dealing with particles to get us uh, to use a tool or a better understanding of how much we need. But the moles of a reaction come from the 
coefficients of that reaction. And that's why balancing was really important. So just like any other company, you don't want to lose any money, right? So you want to be efficient and you want to be smart. And of course, you don't want to lose any money. So let's take a company that's going to make a tricycle. So here's our parts, our reactants to make our tricycle. Hmm, doesn't this look like many things to make one? That looks like a combination reaction to me. All right, so we can use this balanced equation to calculate how much of the reactants, how much of the individual parts do we need to make a certain amount of product to make our tricycle product? Well, we're going to use those coefficients to say we need one frame, one seat, three wheels, one handlebar, two pedals to make our one tricycle. So if I was in the business to make Make tricycles though I'm not going to make one at a time I'm going to make let's say 10 at a time because I want to make this in bulk because I would order then 10 frames and 10 seats and 30 wheels right that's what I would do in order to make our 10 tricycles I would order in bulk because things are cheaper in bulk so chemists are going to use a balanced chemical equation. It's going to be their basis to calculate how much of that reactant is needed or how much product is formed in a reaction. So we're going to use these calculations of quantities as uh, in our stoichiometry problems. And so dimensional analysis is going to come back to us because it's going to be really, really important. And I'm going to remind you one more time that not only are we going to use dimensional analysis analysis in our mole island going from grams to moles that's of one substance now we're going to use this mole ratio to get from one substance to another let's say a substance a to a substance b let's say grams of hydrogen to grams of water so off to our notes packet now um, pause the video read as you write and then play to hear my words so again, stoichiometry is going to be using calculations um, from this balanced equation, and it's a form of bookkeeping for chemists. So we're going to have to interpret a balanced equation according to these quantities of atoms, particles, moles, mass, and volume. So a balanced chemical equation or a balanced chemical reaction gives us so many things. So I'm going to go through an example first, and this is that chart. I'm going to suggest that you listen to what I have to say first and then pause. I have a little thing comes up that says pause when I'm done talking and then write in your notes. So one thing I want to remind you is notice how I made my drawings. I made them how the substances truly look uh, on that molecular level. So I didn't just draw two circles of nitrogen, but they're drawn together as one diatomic molecule. Okay, so make sure that you are drawing these exactly how they are shown on the uh, slide. So pause and make sure to draw those in. Now let's think about our quantities. One of the quantities is atoms. How many atoms of nitrogen do we start with? Well, again, I know it's a diatomic molecule, but it's technically two atoms of nitrogen together. Same thing here with hydrogen and same thing with ammonia. So you want to count the individual atoms. And this really is the law of conservation of mass, matter, and energy, right? If we look at the matter part, if I start with two atoms of nitrogen, I better end with two uh, atoms of nitrogen. And that's why we had to balance our equations. So remember, those coefficients are going to mean a lot. All right, pause, and you can write anything you want in your chart. Now let's talk about particles. So here we have particles, one molecule, again coefficient, three molecules, and two molecules of ammonia. So the problem here is, again, you're never going to have just one molecule of nitrogen or three molecules of hydrogen. You're going to want to have, you're going to have molecules in bulk. So first pause and write this information down. And now let's go back and look at those 10 molecules. Well, if we have 10 molecules, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to multiply all of our co 
efficient by 10, just like we did with the tricycle, right? If you wanted 10 tricycles, you would multiply all of your parts by 10 to get the correct amount. So same thing here. I'm going to multiply by 1, uh, 1 times 10, 3 times 10, and 2 times 10. So again, pause and write that information in. And you know that really particles are dealing with Avogadro's number. So now we're going to also talk about how those uh, particles are represented by Avogadro's number. Now, again, I use 6.022, not the 6.02. Uh, so 1 times Avogadro's number, 3 times Avogadro's number, and so on. So again, pause and write those numbers in. Now, if we're dealing with mass, and this is the good one because this is one we can actually physically mass out. We can use the balance. So I'm going to take my periodic table and I'm going to go, oh, I have two nitrogens. So one nitrogen is 17 times two to give me the 28. Um, uh, two, uh, I'm sorry, uh, one hydrogen, right, is uh, 1.01 .01 times the two for the molecule, but then times three altogether to make how many total here. And uh, same thing with ammonia. Um, so if we look at this, we can say that we have total of 34 grams as reactants, and we have a total of 34 grams as products, and they equal each other, which should make sense according to the law of conservation. So again, pause the video and make sure to get that uh, information in. And if we're dealing with volumes, again, volume is dealing with liters at STP, which means it only deals with gases. And in this case, it's gas of all four substances. So again, pause and write that information in. So moles is going to be the big, 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 big deal here, right? The reason that we're even talking about all this is because the information in a balanced equation gives us the coefficients in the number of moles. And so these coefficients are going to be our mole conversion factor to go from one substance to another. So this is going to be our, our this is what we really, really need to focus on. So again, pause and make sure to get this information down. All right, so this is all of the quantities, right? This is the different quantities that we talked about before. And this is everything that the reaction tells us. This is everything we can interpret from this reaction. And again, that mole is really going to be helpful. So let's do a practice problem. So using the information we just went over, the first thing I want you to do is balance because you're not going to be able to answer A, B, or C if you don't have the correct balanced equation. And this is a pretty easy one. So pause and balance that reaction. So hopefully you got the balancing of 1, 8, 5, and 6. So now you're going to take the time. Uh, you might need to pause and get your periodic table out for the mass, but you're going to interpret the mass of all of the reactants and products, the volume total of the reactants and products, and the moles of each of those reactants and products. So in other words, for mass, volume, and mold, just like we did with the example, um, what's the mass here? What's the mass here? What's the mass here? And what's the mass here? So you should technically have four masses, four different volumes, and four different moles. All right, so hopefully you paused. You used your periodic table to figure out the mass. Hopefully you used 22.4 liters to figure out the volume. And of course you used the coefficients to figure out the moles. So hopefully you got that as an answer. I went a step further just to show you that total 328 grams of reactants equals the 328 grams of products. That's according to our law of conservation of mass, matter, and energy. And hopefully, again, you got these numbers uh, for your liters and your moles as well. So pause and check over your work. All right, guys, time for a quick quiz again. Um, so we have a pause, read the question, and then come up with an answer A, B, C, or D. So it says, how many bicycles can you make? Hopefully, it, it, because you only need, uh, let's see here, a set of... Uh, I would have went by C. I apologize, but I think C is the better answer, correct? Because that's how many frames. You only need one frame in order to make those uh, bicycles. Um, 
So not sure. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, number two, this is a little bit more of what we're going to be dealing with anyway. So number two, again, pause and see if you can come up with an answer. Hopefully you came up with that one. And number three, again, what is conserved? What are the things that we talked about conserved? In this particular case, it's all of them because of the mole ratio. All right, guys.